Afternoon everybody and Happy New Year! First movie of 2020. Jojo Rabbit, directed and written by Taika Waititi. What's it like? Is it any good? Should you spend your money, stick around and you'll find out. Now in Woody Allen's Crimes and Misdemeanors, Alan Alda plays a director of TV comedies and he says at one point, comedy is tragedy plus time. In other words, there has to be a certain amount of time that passes before a tragic event can become comic. So the question you have to ask about Jojo Rabbit is, has enough time passed since the time of the Nazis to make a funny film? Well, the answer to that is yes. So then the second question is, is Jojo Rabbit that film? And the answer to that, I'm sorry to say, is no. Now, what is Jojo Rabbit about? Well, Jojo Bessler plays a 10-year-old boy who joins the Hitler Youth. And during a weekend training camp, uh, something happens to a rabbit. The most unpleasant thing to happen to a rabbit since Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction. I won't spoil your... Uh, is it enjoyment? I won't spoil your enjoyment of this film by revealing what it is. But anyway, that is how Jojo Bessler gets the name of Jojo Rabbit. And he is a... Mm, his father is away. His mother is Scarlett Johansson. He is um, a little bit wimpish, a little bit gawky, a little bit geeky. Anyway, he doesn't perform as well as he could do at this Nazi Hitler youth training camp. And so partly as a consequence of that, but partly because he's a little bit lonely, he has an imaginary friend. And who is his imaginary friend? His imaginary friend is, yes, wait for it, it is Adolf Hitler. And Adolf Hitler is played by Taika Waititi, who's the director of the film. And throughout the rest of the film, which follows Jojo Rabbit's um, fortunes, or lack of them, in the last days of the Second World War, set possibly in Berlin, although I rather suspect not, I don't think it's actually made clear. Um, and, and Hitler crops up every now and again uh, during the film when Jojo Rabbit has a, a moment of difficulty. Now, Jojo has a friend called Yorkie, a bit like Chocolate Bar, who is a fat kid. Yes, guys, there is a fat kid in the film. He's a funny friend, and occasionally he appears. And he also has a friend who he discovers, and I won't explain to you how he discovers it, uh, who is a young teenage girl, around about 15, 16, who is a Jew. And Jojo, who is a staunch member of the Hitler Youth, wants to learn about the Jews and their history and what they're like. And the film teaches him important lessons, guys, about how Jews are just ordinary people like the rest of us. Now, my problem with the film is, first of all, for the first three quarters of the film, I really didn't like it. Now, I'll be honest, I went into the film thinking, I'm not sure I'm going to like this film. It's a film about Nazi Germany. It's a sort of comedy, an imaginary friend who's had off Hitler. It, it, you've got to admit, it doesn't, on the surface, sounds like it's going to be a massive success. Now, three quarters of the way through the film, something happens that is truly shocking. And there are moments in the film that are deeply unpleasant and truly shocking. But I think, and, and that changed my view of the film a bit. I wouldn't say I liked it more, but I would say I disliked it less. And the last 20 minutes of the film, I rather warmed to it. Not enough for me to say that I think you should go and see this film because, to be honest, I don't think you should. I don't think it works. It's not funny enough, despite the fact that in the audience, every time somebody made a joke about Nazis or swastikas or killing the Jews or whatever it is, there were people in the audience who laughed like drains. I did not laugh. And going with my son, Joel, he didn't laugh either. Now, we have, in some respects, dissimilar senses of humour. Perhaps some of his sense of humour is inherited from me. I didn't find it funny. There were a couple of amusing lines. Now, let me say first of all, I don't want to come all po-faced about this. I believe, and anyone who knows me will know this, I think you can make jokes about anything. I don't think there is anything you shouldn't or can't make jokes about. But I would add one absolutely crucial caveat, and that is the joke must be funny. And I didn't think 
that Jojo Rabbit was particularly funny. Now, you may, you may go and see this film, you may laugh like a drain, you may think it's wonderful. I didn't. And I have to say that six weeks ago, I went to Auschwitz with my lady wife. Uh, there is a video that I made about Auschwitz, which you can see uh, here. There's a link to it. Uh, actually, there isn't a link to it there, but I just like pointing to it. And having been to Auschwitz and seen what the Nazis got up to and ordinary Germans got up to, it's quite difficult for uh, me uh, to see this film and see them making light or humorous. Now, you can say, well, you've missed the point, Julian. This is a deeply satirical look at Nazi Germany. They have laughed the fuck out of it, and you've missed that. Well, I, I, I see that, but I don't see that. I didn't get that aspect of it. I thought, I can see how you might have thought that was the film, and maybe that's the film that they tried to make, but to me, it just didn't work. It wasn't bitingly satirical enough, and it wasn't funny enough. Now, um, I did a review of Death of Stalin, which in some respects this film uh, reminds me of, and you can see a link to it just up here. But there is a scene in Death in Stalin, uh, which I talk about, where Beria, the uh, foreign minister, uh, is executed and then set on fire. And I was watching it and I thought, this isn't really funny. Um, I, I get the satire, and I thought Death, in St Death of Stalin was very funny in parts, but that bit I thought wasn't really funny. And there are scenes in um, Jojo Rabbit which brings you up thought was short uh, and that are not funny. And you think, well, hang on a minute, uh, this is a comedy, but that's not funny. So what about the rest of it that is not funny, or what about the rest of it that's supposed to be a tragedy? So um, I guess I'm a little confused about my feelings about the film. I, I didn't like it, then I did like it a bit, and then I'm not sure that I liked it. Now, I thought that the boy, uh, Roman Griffin Davis, his name is, who plays the 10-year-old boy, I thought he was excellent. I thought he gave a brilliant performance. Uh, my son Joel, uh, who perhaps has more experience with 10-year-old actors, wasn't massively impressed with his performance, so I, I leave that there for you. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, Sam Rockwell is in it, who plays a German soldier. I wasn't entirely convinced of his performance. Stephen Merchant is in it, he plays a Gestapo, and if there's anything that Stephen Merchant was born to play, it's a beanpole-thin, tall, vicious Gestapo agent. He does that very well. Rebel Wilson is in it, she plays a fat bird who's the kind of laughing stock in a way of the, of the German characters. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, Taika Waititi. Now, the weakest part of the film, for me, was Taika Waititi as Hitler, the imaginary friend. I didn't think he brought anything to the film, and in fact I thought he distracted from it. I think in many respects it would have been a better film if Taika Waititi or the imaginary friend was not in it. Now, I won't give away the ending. It's a, it's a happy-ish ending, I suppose. Well, after all, we won the war, they lost. But um, the 10-year-old boy, Jojo Rabbit, and his uh, girlfriend, I suppose you, you could describe her, they suffice, they, su they beg your pardon, they survived the war. And they, at the end of the film, David Bowie's Heroes, sung in German, plays over their final scene. Now, it's such a wonderful song, and it's a bit of a cheesy moment. So you have this kind of uh, juxtaposition of something that is iconic along with something that is cheesy. So it really needs a new word for it. I was thinking maybe of uh, eye cheesy or chonic. You know, it's a chonic moment. You cannot escape the power of Bowie's music. You cannot escape the power of that final frame. Does it make this a good film? No, it doesn't. Uh, should I think you could go, should go and see it? No, I don't. It's an interesting experiment. It's an interesting experiment that ultimately doesn't succeed ultimately fails, ultimately perhaps under the weight of expectations, under the weight of thinking it should be funny that it, funnier than it is, but it doesn't really work. A bit like the Third Reich, I suppose. And by the way, that's a joke. See you next time.